Within months, other K-pop stars were charged. The entire industry was rocked by the allegations. But across the world, dozens were falling ill with a mysterious virus that would ultimately change life as we know it. One after the other, K-pop stars are taking their own lives. HYBE called this latest deal a game changer for the impact K-pop will have in the global music industry. It's your classic South Korean K-pop band, except that they don't exist. The four members of MAVE are virtual idols, and every part of their debut performance is computer-generated. During the COVID pandemic and afterward, people around the world reevaluated how they approached life, and most of us came out of it with a different viewpoint. This kind of sea change can come about in the K-pop industry too. Six months into 2023, the K-pop industry saw jaw-dropping acquisitions, lawsuits over image and creative rights, and artists leaving companies they once pledged loyalty to. And the year isn't even over yet, so it had me thinking, what changes in the K-pop landscape have changed it forever? In 2021, while the pandemic was raging, K-pop experienced Bullygate, a massive influx of bullying scandals in which many alleged victims came forward to share their experiences with executives and idols in the industry. It was almost a daily occurrence throughout 2021, and it seemed that many previously untouchable K-pop figures found themselves in the crosshairs. Some were true accusations, but others were false. True or not, this opened the door to conversations in the K-pop world that forced companies and society as a whole to expect more from its leaders and for its members to better understand their positions as role models. While idols were the target of most of the bullying scandals, idols as a group have also had their day. Across the world, employees realized their own self-worth during the pandemic years, and we witnessed mass resignations and new trends like quiet quitting. The COVID pandemic shook the world, and the parallels that occurred even in the K-pop industry have not gone unnoticed. 20 or even 10 years ago, it was unthinkable for large numbers of idols to leave their companies, since these labels were seen to have gifted them with the fame and wealth they enjoyed. Sure, this was more common in smaller companies, but in recent years, artists like Jesse, Hyanna, and Don all left P Nation, GOT7 left JYP, XOCBX filed a lawsuit to terminate their contract with SM Entertainment, which was a shock, but luckily was resolved quickly, and even the Big Bang members leaving YG one by one. Some exits we saw coming, but others were a surprise. Typically within Asian corporate cultures, employees are intensely loyal, and they tend to stay on. However, these norms have been changing, and it can be argued that the pandemic accelerated the inevitable trend. We've witnessed a large number of acquisitions within the K-pop industry in the last few years. Thanks to BTS's huge and lucrative popularity, their label Big Hit Entertainment had the funds to gobble up its competitors. Now rebranded as Hive Corporation, it acquired several big name labels like Pledis Entertainment, home of Seventeen and New East, and Source Music, home of G-Friend. The company has continued to grow and reach other sectors outside of K-pop music such as technology platforms and acquisitions of music labels in the United States. But it wasn't the only label to grow. SM Entertainment founder Lee Soo Man shook the industry when he sold his shares to Hive for a stake in the company. Simultaneously, the CEO and fellow execs wanted to turn around and sell its shares to Kakao Entertainment, another company like Hive, which also acquired several high-profile K-pop labels like Starship and IST Entertainment. The industry was shaken and new major companies have emerged, and now these heavy hitters are all buying each other up. On top of that, there's also significant foreign investment into the industry, such as Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, or PIF, investing about $500 million in Kakao Entertainment alone in the past year. Many foreign powers see the growth of K-pop and are wanting a piece of the pie. Sure, it's great business, but at the end of the day, these giants become more separated from the individual idols that provide less and less direct revenue. The creativity and the well-being of the employees are suffering too. They're all pawns in this corporate game, and it's why we've started seeing these employees, namely the artists, abandoning ship and moving elsewhere within the industry so they can try not to lose sight of what K-pop is supposed to be about. In general, the entire K-pop industry has always been on a boom and bust track, and creative output is now aligning more to global entertainment trends, which I would argue is diluting what made K-pop so fresh. I actually dove more into this in another recent video of mine that you can check out after this video. But other interesting trends to note is that industry insiders are saying that the number of male trainee applicants is going down precipitously. 
And females currently make up roughly 90% of the current ID training population. Many are looking at all the hardships one must accept to be part of the training process with no guarantee they debut in a group and deciding it's not worth it, instead choosing to be an influencer on social media. Then again, younger generations aspiring to become influencers versus going into the working world is its own shift not exclusive to K-pop. Survival shows have been a big part of K-pop for a while now. While they are all essentially popularity contests with very little regard of how well-balanced the final lineup is, a survival show is absolutely a learning experience for new artists and can create a lot of buzz. Survival shows for the past few years had groups formed and then debuted not long after the show's ending. Compared to the systems of a company forming a group behind the scenes with years of intense processes, this new norm might only prove best for short-term gains versus long-term success. It does seem that now K-pop survival shows are getting shaken up as well. It's never going to quite work as smoothly as a group that trained together over years to be one functioning unit. When you compare the show format in which groups are formed without any regard to balancing of talents and strengths or even basic cohesiveness to a company that spent years of training and developing a group, one wonders if this is sustainable given the needs of the group as a whole. Still, one could argue the survival shows starring idols that have already debuted are becoming more more popular, with the likes of Queendom and Kingdom, The Unit, The Second World, etc., as people look for higher quality competition. Virtual groups have also started to spring up quite quickly, utilizing elements of AI and the metaverse, though the definition of metaverse is still up in the air it seems. Katie as League of Legends based characters, Espa's AIs and Navis, and newer more fully virtual groups like Maeve and Fevers are definitely a novel trend that may or may not last. While these groups are currently still utilizing human idols behind the scenes, companies like Metaverse, the people behind Maeve, have talked openly about using AI to allow fans to communicate with the virtual idols in virtually any language. While it is too soon to say, it most certainly could be the beginning of a new epoch in K-pop. Props to me for finding a way to use the word epoch. But who's to say that we'll start seeing more artificial intelligence use in regards to music composition and lyric writing? I mean, take a look at the strikes right now going on in Hollywood in regards to how AI can be used to replace writers and using someone's likeness. K-pop's vocal AI trend is also opening up a can of worms that could have us go down a dark path if not corrected. So much is already on the horizon when it comes to industry shakeups that we fans will need to have a careful eye on our biases and hold the industry to a standard that makes sure things are improving and not falling victim to trends that put it backwards. Everything happens for a reason though, and shakeups can be good, so we shall see their effects in the months and years to come. Hey, that's it for today, friends. Let me know your thoughts in the comments of the K-pop industry shakeups. So much is happening, it's so hard to keep up. Stay tuned for more K-pop content from me. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me. Check out many more of my videos, and I shall see you next time.